Hello and a very warm welcome to Dun and Bradstreet and SBI present Business Enterprises of Tomorrow 2023 presented by KK HR the roadmap to Atmanirbhar Bhavishya a platform where industry leaders visionaries and experts share their insights delve into challenges opportunities and the roadmap for SMEs and mid corporates the summit kicked off with the auspicious lamp lighting ceremony by dignitaries let us begin with the first session of the day which is an introductory note on the state of SMEs in india and to deliver this note may i call upon on the stage dr arun singh uh, the global chief economist done in brat street today msme contribute one third to the nation gdp expectation is to contribute half of nation gdp by let's say fy 2020 2030 almost 50% of the new company formation happening in the tier 2 tier 3 companies which means the new company formation is going what we call the true bharat and as not is just the urban cluster urban center is going into the tier 2 tier 3 cities in our database dnb database the global company comes they inquire about dnb database in order to get the trade partnership business investment anything the out of 100 inquiry they do in indian landscape 75% of that inquiry on the indian msmes which means look at the power they are looking for the indian companies to do the trade to do the business to do the partnership this or the global inquiries companies now ask me the same questions again are we ready to contribute 70% of the incremental gdp are we ready yes. now this is powerful thank you with this ladies and gentlemen we move on to our next session and with a huge round of applause requesting you all to join me in welcoming mr shitij such a on the stage everyone when we talk about managing talent uh, talent in itself uh, you know it's it's a big big dimension you know so if we look at it uh, workplaces are nothing but a bunch of people working in synergy uh, for a common purpose so when uh, the people start joining the organization this does not stay that common you know if we look at uh, the businesses today um you know there is a certain purpose certain vision certain value proposition for the community that uh, we bring to the table uh, it could be very simple uh, purpose or vision of maybe delivering a pizza to a pizza lover from uh, you know greater than humanity purposes like uh, you know reaching the moon or colonizing the mars so uh, while these purposes organizations have be- these big purposes uh, if we look at the people side of the picture the employee side of the picture they have uh, you know simple aspirations while they join the organizations someone to make money someone to you know grow into the career someone to learn uh, and so forth so uh, keka as a platform is an end to end employee management platform which helps uh, in aligning your people towards that vision and purpose that the organization has thank you everyone with this ladies and gentlemen we move, we move forward of course with our second keynote address of the day and with us we have dr rk singh chief general manager sidbi to share his thoughts right here on the stage with us the market transitioning strategy also requires how do we hook up these enterprises local 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 regional regional national national global so the transition has to be uh, just uh, for market side and when it comes to money uh, i feel uh, more than money it's uh, the honey which is required honey is uh, it's like a uh, top up uh, basically nobody is looking at money alone it's a credit uh, like said be we say we don't finance we provide credit plus because the credit comes with mentoring hand holding uh, and that is uh, what is required more to make an entity bankable the moment an entity is bankable there would be so many banks looking around uh, that entity to support and that is more crucial so i find that enablers in ecosystem uh, are more important to be woven right now ladies and gentlemen let's gear up for the first panel discussion of the day and the topic of the panel discussion is why financing remains the biggest growth impediment despite the government push what are the methods techniques that you particularly consider so that probably you are mitigating your organization as well and that probably will help a lot of friends in the audience to understand the mindset of an entrepreneur or a or a lender 
typically the data points used are credit bureau data which tells you the ability as well as the willingness of the customer whether he is being paying regularly now you know, our customers typically are new to credit so there is no data point that we get uh, in most cases from credit bureau uh, most of these businesses transact in cash even now and therefore the bank statements will be very very little uh, they obviously don't uh, maintain uh, pnl and uh, balance sheet so how do you look at this and still underwrite and i think that's the magic that uh, i finance brings on to the table our method is that we look at the type of in business or industry that the uh, organization is in if it's a grocery store then what are the observable uh, features that one can look at the inventory size the size of the shop and so on to get a sense of how much is the total sales turnover and we understand the margins in that industry to come to a profit number so my next question is to you uh, mr bajaj you have the youngest organization which is 60 years plus and you would have seen uh, the trends which are there in the lending which would have evolved over a period of time today credit is a huge problem in india we want to make do make in india we want to compete with china but china provides credit at 1% 0% half a percent 2% so at the end of the day we want an indian enterprise who's paying 14% 12% or even if it's a great enterprise paying 7 8% to compete on a global market so that that's a very unfair uh, you know disadvantage to, for the indian entrepreneurs to have let us also look at the problem from the other end like how a banker gets protected if he funds right and why lakhs and lakhs of you know npas happen every year and what is the root cause of this problem the root cause of the problem is legal system in india which doesn't give any protection to a creditor and therefore the financier always looks into some kind of a security a fintech looks for data banks look for a collateral to proceed with the next uh, set of panelists who are going to be joining us with a very very interesting topic that we have The topic is how are Indian SMEs and mid corporates becoming an integral part of the global supply chain? A very important one. How in this whole ecosystem, uh, and especially in the last two three years, uh, whether the micro, small, and medium enterprises have been able to capitalize on this particular opportunity? What are the kind of opportunities which got created for them? If we really see past three years, first the challenges of uh, COVID nineteen uh, came, then suddenly. past two years this geopolitical situation in ukraine and russia happened so eventually there were many many such disruptions the supply chains was disrupted thankfully our indian ecosystem really took advantage of this eventually today situation is that irrespective what size of company you are if you are into overseas exports business you also all of you might have witnessed just yes, there is a increased demand people are taking across the world india as a serious destination for any of the commodity for any of the product for any of the process what do you think is the role in terms of how digital economy a uh, digital technology has played a role in this particular ecosystem first and foremost smes and the micro enterprises are going to be the growth drivers as far as our immediate next target of 5 trillion dollar economy is concerned so that's how important this sector is and alok just mentioned a few set of numbers that 76% of their abouts of the transactions are happening there so while the ticket value could be small but the numbers are huge and they are going to grow further all right the topic of the next discussion the panel discussion that we have is how do indian smes and mid corporates capitalize on big data and technology trends uh, when we look at ondc uh, and we look at market access you know as the key driver for msmes uh, how do you see that panning out how do you see your role how do you see that benefiting the larger ecosystem if we as ondc have we we have a uh, we have a target we are going to go down to 75% of india when i say 75% of india that means that we will go in and touch another billion people now think of it from the other side only 1 2 3% 3 of the businesses are actually online and if you try and break that down and see how much of that is also msme i can guarantee that that number is going to be even smaller 
Now, if that is true, then the headway for us is huge. And that's what we are trying to do. Uh, what role do you see at SAP? Uh, you know, how are you enabling that journey for a typical mid-market or a small enterprise? From 2019 to 2023, our footprint has increased from some 32 cities to 63 cities in India. Uh, this uh, mid-market mid or MSMEs are bound to exponentially grow. All they need is certain stimulus, and those stimulus has to come just not financially, but the ones who have leaped, they have leaped on the back of the technology. Through our association with these MSMEs across the country, we realize that not only the organizations, the MSMEs require you know, digital solutions, they actually require a partner who can guide them through this digital transformation. And to serve this need, we worked with Dun & Bradstreet and created a digital assessment tool called Ready for Next a Digital Assessment. All right, ladies and gentlemen, moving on with the next segment. The discussion will be about breaking barriers, making difference, creating impact. Clean, you know, you've been a very successful entrepreneur. You've grown your business. You've acquired multiple uh, organizations. But how has been your journey? What are the challenges that you've faced to reach where you are today? I think the single biggest challenge is representation. There's just not enough women in senior jobs. Technically, when you look at a founder or someone who begins a business, which is hardcore, financial, p and driven business where you're accountable to driving revenue, ensuring that your cash flows flow in. Those kind of roles, whether they are in MNCs as professionals or they are companies that are self-funded where you're starting your own business, we see far fewer women in senior roles. So I think the number one challenge is representation. Coming from Neeti Aayog, do you see a rise in women entrepreneurs, uh, you know, through the data, through the research uh, that you do? And what are the kind of policy measures that are being taken to encourage more women in the workforce? Definitely there is, you know, a, a, a trend in that direction. Um, and encouragingly, uh, not just in urban areas, but uh, even in, you know, rural areas, um, you know, we, of course, there's certain parts of the country where, uh, you know, historically we've seen that, you know, we tend to have more entrepreneurship and also more women entrepreneurs and, you know, perhaps the uh, situations there uh, are more conducive for that. But I think in general, you know, there, there is definitely an increase in, uh, you know, in the numbers that we are seeing. May I please request Mr. Praveen Raghavendra, Deputy Managing Director, State Bank of India, to join us here on the stage. MSMEs have a crucial role to play in achieving the objectives of self-reliance and 8 trillion economy by 2030. They are key drivers of employment, innovation, exports, and their growth is essential for India's economic development. From promoting indigenous manufacturing, creating employment, encouraging entrepreneurship, innovation, to reducing our dependency on imports. MSMEs play a significant role in all economic activities. Access to financing remains one of the most significant constraints to the survival, growth, and productivity of micro and small and medium enterprises. A study by Avendu Capital indicates that there is a gap of almost 42 trillion in MSME sector. And the credit gap results from both demand and supply side problems. Limited access to market, regulatory compliance, a skill shortage, and limited access to technology, a stiff competition from large corporates, and maintaining high quality standards and governance are some of the critical challenges faced by MSMEs today. However, a strong and concerted policy action from government support in the form of subsidy, subventions, ease in compliance, and shift in uh, lending policy of financial institutions have addressed these challenges to large extent. 
with increased availability of data from several sources, including GSTN, income tax, credit bureau, and fraud registry, it is now possible to do most of the due diligence online and appraise the MSME loan proposals very swiftly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, moving on with the topic, how do Indian SMEs and mid-corporates build a sustainable tomorrow? Um, what is the importance of sustainability for India Inc.? Two things that I would want to bring in here. One, sustainability helps future-proofing uh, in terms of our businesses, in terms of our existence, in terms of our resources. And I think it's high time we do that. Second, most, most uh, of our customers or consumers now are informed consumers, and this is not something it is out of choice, but they are demanding it. Whether it's consumers, whether it's our investors, whether our employees, I think all of our stakeholders are really, really uh, wanting this. I believe that our MSMEs are extremely uh, uh, ESG conscious. It is just that they did not know the acronym, they did not call it sustainability, but uh, India is a very challenging country to business, extremely highly populated. You want to uh, set up a small plant, you have to uh, face issues of uh, 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 land acquisition. Uh, I firmly believe that eventually the concept of ESG will be successful when we will link it to two things, cyber survival and cost. When sustainability will mean better cost structures for the companies, companies will automatically adopt it. We believe that the best thing that can be created is to use your local resources. So in 2008, uh, we envisaged that it is always better to use the Saudeshi coal than importing uh, cooking coal. So we put in the world's largest coal gasification based DRI plant in our Angul Udisa factory. That was and we saw in 2007, and we commissioned this plant in 2014. And it is up and running, and which is uh, saving so much of forex. To kickstart this segment, as the first speaker of the keynote address, may I request Mr. Avinash Gupta, Managing Director and CEO, Dun & Bradstreet India, to come on this stage and share his viewpoints on the SMEs and mid-corporate sector. Uh, because we've been around so long, we've been kind of looking at the world and capturing data. So we have this concept of the Duns number, you know, the, which is a unique number, which you know, uh, Koshi will also see being given to, to some of the ONDC suppliers today. Unique nine-digit number never dies, and it helps us basically, you know, keep that as a unique identifier for companies. So we've been doing this for a while. So we have approximately you know 500 million plus people with the Duns number globally. That's a fairly large number. In India, we have done the number on something like 32 million of companies like yourselves. Now, the interesting thing to share, which, you know, which I found very fascinating when I started looking at this data, out of this 511 million DUNS numbers which we have, DUNSified entities, something like 230 million are inactive. So out of the 280 million people who are active globally, that's pretty much the number, guess how many listed companies are there in the world? 10 million, yeah. So, you know, in the world globally, there are only less than 100,000, less than 1 million, 1 lakh listed companies. It's around 70, 80,000 companies. So that is the listed universe globally. That's the one you can pretty much get a lot of information because they're listed. So the point I'm trying to make, the entire world is SME. The entire world is, you know, out of that 280 million companies, something like you know, 5, 6 million are more than $5 million. Everybody else is in the small end. All right. With this, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our next keynote speaker. May I please request Mr. T. Koshi, Managing Director and CEO ONDC, to share his viewpoints. The way of supply chain and the, the distribution channel is undergoing a huge change. Because after we initiated this, uh, in, uh, um, this in the last about a year plus, I'd been talking to a large number of enterprises from big and small. On one side, like people like, uh, you know, the large FMCG companies like Unilever's and et cetera, they realize the, inor I mean, the, the, the power it is giving them back to strengthen the traditional commerce, the small and medium enterprises, the micro, what you call the Kirana stores and so on and so forth across the country. They are also seeing the possibility of expanding the sourcing 
from different parts. So these are the kind of transformation that is going to take place. And my only suggestion to all of you is um, keep a look, think, um, let your mental models break from thinking the restrictions of a platform to the opportunities of an open network. We quickly move on to our next segment, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, it is the Dunn and Bradstreet's Dunn's number felicitation in association with ONDC. To the first few suppliers listed on the ONDC platform, which was launched earlier this year. And to ha hand over the same, may I please invite Avinash Gupta, MD and CEO, DNB, to please join us. And we already have Mr. T. Koshi, MD and CEO, ONDC, on this stage. A big round of applause for both of them. Come on, everybody. The Dunn's number is being handed over to Hydraulics and Pneumatics Engineers, Fala Handicraft Society. Give them a huge round of applause. The next one is Fala Handicraft Society. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we proceed to our next segment, which is the keynote address by our guest of honor. With your permission, sir, of course, may I request our guest of honor, Sri Sanjeev Sanyal, who is the member of the Economic Advisory Council to our honorable prime minister. It's a pleasure to have you indeed here with us. Invest into the businesses of tomorrow to create them, to take the risk, reap the benefits, and if it goes wrong, reap the non-benefits. But the fact is, it's not the job of the government to be able to tell you what the businesses of tomorrow are. However, we do have a job. And the job is to make it as easy and painless for you to be able to do business so that you can take risks, generate value, and be able to engage with a future in which India, of course, will play a very important role in the world. Although we got thrown off a little bit by the two years of COVID, but I think we came out of that reasonably strong, and I, I think it's fair to say that India today has a genuinely well-grounded economy that you know, faces a, 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 a future where in two, three years' time, we will become the world's third largest economy. And now, dear guests, we come to one of the key highlights of the day, the showcasing of 14th edition of Leading SMEs of India and Leading Mid-Corporates of India's publication. It is now time to felicitate the hard work of Indian SMEs. Dun & Bradstreet and State Bank of India's Business Excellence Awards are an endeavour to acknowledge the achievement and exemplary performance of India's SMEs and mid-corporates across industry and theme-based categories. For uh, more than two decades, uh, uh, Dun & Bradstreet has been driving various conversations, uh, especially on the front of MSMEs. Uh, MSMEs and mid-corporates are critical to India becoming a $5 trillion economy. Uh, the job creation and for spurring domestic demand. Over the, in fact, I must first say that MSMEs are practically equivalent to Atmanir Bharata. And of course, a big thank you to the lovely audience. All of you have been part of the BOT 2023 and have contributed to the conversations, contributed to how India can build a roadmap towards an Atmanir Bharata. Thank you.